Welcome back to the Pulse of Willie and Al. How's it going today, brother? Uh, pretty good, man. Pretty good. Uh, I see you're back in Turkey. I am. Yeah, I yeah. I survived. I survived on our way back. Uh, it was uh, it's brutal. I'm a little jet lagged right now, but uh, getting used to it, right? So, yeah, <laughs> things going good in the states there for you now. You know, uh, it's not the same without you, but uh, well, you you, uh, you had we had a hell of a run that six weeks. And uh, it was good. It was we good. did. I'm so glad you brought that up because the yeah. the culmination of that six weeks ended in us being able to strike fear into someone that has never had fear struck into their lives. Um, all yeah. with a game of of swinging swinging hoops, right? It's uh, I'm not even sure what yeah. that game's called, but I know uh, I know that Fred will literally walk the long way home to avoid that place again. So, uh, <laughs> all I know is that I went on a, a run in that game that can just never be duplicated. Yeah, I think never you hit two in a row. Yeah. All right. For those that don't know what we're talking about, there's like this wooden cross that sits on a table, and it there's hooks that hang from strings, and you have to swing the uh, you have to swing the circle loop and try Wash, to get it. Washers. Yep. Yeah. And try to get it stuck on the hook. And the way we were playing it is the person that. Uh, if if we had to say someone's name before we threw it of the people that were in our group, and if we made it, that person, uh, we had to buy that person a drink. Um, Which that part of the game didn't make any sense to me. No, I didn't like I didn't like being punished for being reward or like you know. I, put at the game. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, but it was definitely worth it. A lot of fun, great times with friends, family, everybody, and uh, I. There's no doubt in my mind, I had an immense impact on uh, the country as a whole. So, um, True. and now I'm back. So, and now we get into like, honestly, the best time of year, right? Start of football season, postseason baseball, fantasy football, uh, start of the school year too. So a lot of different yeah. things, but um, we're actually back with a kind of uh, celebratory episode today. Uh, this is our 50th episode a 50 burger out. We did it. Um, and I know you would put in here our ARP episode, yeah, uh, which is right. great. So, um, listen, uh, before we jump into things, I just wanted to send out a little thank you, uh, because obviously it is episode number 50 that we have, uh, there's 49 that came before it. And just wanted to thank some of the people that have provided support on the way. Uh, friends, family, viewers out there, we really appreciate it. And uh, we're hoping, Al and I, that uh, we're going to be just as enthused going forward uh, as we were for the first 50. Um, we don't plan on letting up because we want to bring you that good MLB content, that good NFL content, and uh, as we get into it, some more fantasy content this year. So I uh, just wanted to say, like, we have no plans on slowing down, and we couldn't be doing this if it weren't for you. So we really do appreciate it. Um, and I just said all that for you, Al. So, uh, but any, anything you would like to throw in there too, that I didn't spice up correctly. No, no, no. You, you said it perfectly. Like, uh, the people that have been listening, uh, you know, uh, we thank you. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a labor of love and, uh, a reason for two friends who live 5,000 miles apart to get together at least once a week and chat. So. Ab absolutely. Couldn't have said it better. My labor of love. Perfect. Perfect. So, uh, why don't we jump into things, right? Major League Baseball. Dun -dun -dun, right? So, we got our... Uh, first, we have a bit of sad news in baseball. Uh, something that I know kind of happened overnight, but uh, just wanted to bring it up. Uh, I don't know why we start Major League Baseball with some sad news, but we got to. Because yeah. we're going to finish yeah. strong with some good news. Uh, but the passing of Billy Bean. Uh, just an absolute legend just uh, in the sport of baseball. And really he had such a great impact on the sport. Uh, I just watched Moneyball today to kind of pay tribute to him. And it just, I, I think yeah. it portrayed him in some parts, not in the nicest way, uh, but I think it did capture kind of that, um, I don't want to call it arrogance, but confidence that he kind of walked with, 
right? And understanding yeah. like, hey, listen, you know, this is this is going to be something that's going to take some time. Getting people to understand, hey, listen, it's a process. It's a process. Um, and the thing I really like about him most was there, there was many doubters of him. Uh, and he just stayed the course. He stayed the course, man. So um, yeah. unfortunately, he couldn't. I think it was leukemia that ended up taking him, uh, which yeah. is just sad. But uh, 60 years old, too. Way too young. Way too young. So uh, any, anything you wanted to mention about him? Because I know there, there's some neat, neat things that he accomplished during his time. Yeah, uh, a couple things couple things one uh his major league debut uh he had four hits four hits um, yeah which is it's, it's a record uh he, which is tied with a bunch of other people um a couple other things too in, in 2002 he was this close to being hired as the red sox gm this close yeah but was it dombrowski that was there no who was who was in boston at that point dombrowski didn't come till much much later but yeah no dombrowski was like uh 2017 i think yeah yeah who who was the gm uh, i think it was dan duquette duquette at that point still okay um but yeah so they were really close on, on getting that deal and it falls through in the 11th hour and then they hire theo epstein and well the rest is history yeah um the thing I do want to talk about, uh, he was MLB's, I think, second openly gay player, and he worked really hard. I, I think the thing that like I will forever remember about him, um, he worked really hard and worked with the commissioner on inclusion, uh, and like you know, kind of making sure everybody feels comfortable and safe. And and to be honest, with you, that and that to me, like, is as much as all the cool stuff he did in baseball for me, like. That's that's a huge thing as well. Making sure yeah. everybody feels comfortable, safe, um, and, you know, and, and being an ally. And I think that's really important. So, I, I know yeah. there was a separate title that he had, but I'm pretty sure that's that was his role in Major League Baseball up until just a few years ago was like similar to like a diversity and inclusion type role yeah. that he had. So um, and, and, and no one better, I think, to, to fill those shoes than than him. Uh, so, yeah, it's um you know, just, just sad to see that. But, uh, I did want to mention, you know, they, and they had brought it up, you know, the streak that the A's had during that time, that one season, right. It was historic, uh, what they were doing. Uh, it put them in, in, uh, the same category as a lot of very infamous teams in baseball. Um, but I think it's kind of interesting that this comes up now, as we're just talking about, you know, the white Sox that conversely tied the record for 21 straight losses, you know, they won last night, though. Yeah, they, won last they night. did. Yeah. So they, they, uh, they end up, you know, winning and breaking that streak. Uh, I think. Am I wrong? To the A's. Yeah. To the yeah. A's. So even even stranger. But uh, yeah. So well, it's quick. Quick yeah. back. Quick fun story. So before the game during warmups, uh, the the Oakland um, the Oakland PA says uh, guy the person who does the PA was playing Taylor Swift's 22 during warmups, which is a just all-time troll move, which I I appreciate and respect in more ways than I could ever imagine. And, yeah, uh, that's great. Yeah, that's... It backfired. So... Man, it's... Uh, uh... I did the math. Yeah, I was... Before... Yeah, I think it was yesterday I did the math. And, uh... So there is an outside shot. So there, I think they're going to break the, the all-time losses record at 120. Mm -hmm. Now... Pre uh, pre modern ball era, the 1899 Cleveland Spiders lost 134 games. Oh my god! Could yeah. you imagine? Like, oh, yeah. so oh. before yesterday, they would have had to have gone one and what was it? One in forty, uh, one in forty six, and their last forty seven to do it. That's insane. That's insane. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would be very difficult. Is that really all we have left? Less than 50 games? Yeah. It's, oh man, that's wild. Yeah. Well, uh, because we didn't do it last time, let's talk about some, some of the trades that came through at the deadline. We, we had talked about possibility of some guys moving and stuff, but now, uh, we, we have some guys that have moved, uh, Flaherty going from Detroit to Los Angeles. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, you know, the Dodgers need every bit of help they can pitching. <laughs> they, God, they, everybody and their mother's hurt on the Dodgers. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, I was sad to, like, 
I mean, Flaherty has been all right for the Tigers this year. I was sad to see the Tigers part with him, but like, they, they I don't think they were going to re-sign him anyway. I, so I don't, like, I don't think so either. Um, yeah. And I know uh, our guest, uh, uh, <laughs> our guest we had on the show last week is very excited that Scooball didn't get traded. So. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, that would have been devastating for him. But. Um, next one up, we had Tanner Scott to the Padres from the Marlins, uh, for basically their entire farm system. Did you see that? Yeah. So like, that's like five top 50 prospects they sent for one yeah. guy. And so the, the Padres made a couple bullpen moves that, uh, I really am a fan of. I'm not a fan of how much they gave up for it, but they now, and it's, it's kind of shown since the trade deadline they they've just kind of been on a bender and they mm -hmm. they have now the best bullpen in the game in the league yeah which means you only have to get to like six innings with them and then just let the bullpen do the rest and i i keep saying this and i a great bullpen is the difference between uh you know flaming out, flaming out in the lcs or winning a world series you saw it last year with philly i keep talking about it like Craig Kimbrell cost them a chance to go to the World Series. Yeah. I mean, we're going to talk about that in a few minutes with some of these teams looking at the divisions and stuff, but you're absolutely right. Like, they they definitely strengthened their team big time. Uh, and they're not far out in that division. I, I know. No. I, I know, especially with the Dodgers reeling and stuff, this this season has not gone the way the Dodgers hoped. I'm, I'm sure of that. Um, but. Uh, next one, Jazz Chisholm going to the Yankees from the Marlins. Now I know from Uncle Roger, he was telling me he was already pumped because Jazz Chisholm, I think, hit like four home runs in three games on the road. He didn't even yeah. play at Yankee Stadium uh, when we were talking about that. But what are your thoughts on this? I really am excited for the Yankees to get a guy that gets hurt every single season. Um, really kind of fits in with the Yankees lineup. Really uh -huh. does. Like. Um, but for real though, that's, that's a good pickup for them. The Yankees didn't have a, give up a ton, uh, to get him. And they, if he can stay healthy and consistent, like probably the, the other bat they need to like spell judge and, and, uh, and Soto in that lineup. Mm -hmm. Um, they still have a lot of pitching issues, which I feel like wasn't really addressed at the deadline. Um, but, you know, we'll see going forward. You know, they're still in the thick of the race in the AL East race. They're still in the thick of the wild card race. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, and speaking of that other team, uh, the Orioles were busy adding, too. Uh, you know, they yeah. add Zach Eflin from the Rays and then Trevor Rogers from the Marlins. So, let's talk about Eflin first. Uh, what, what, kind of, what kind of addition is this to their, uh, to their roster? Uh, that's a guy that will that's a guy that will pitch for them, start a game in a postseason. Mm -hmm. Like what they essentially short up their rotation by getting him. And uh, honestly, they didn't have to give up what I felt was like too much for him either, which is great. Yeah. What um, is it with the Rays? It just feels like they were selling the house for free. Like, yeah, it's, it's kind of what the Rays do. Like they, they acquire all these, all this talent. Um, and then they get pretty good. They'll, you know, get pretty far in the playoffs. They'll make a World Series once every, like, 15 years. And then they just kind of tear it down because no – because management won't pay them. Mm -hmm. And it's really kind of sad because they've put out some really good baseball teams. Oh, man. Um, they were awful when they first started. And then to see them actually have success, I was like, man, but during the times of, like, Evan Longoria and, like – yeah, they had some really good teams. And, David Price. Uh, yeah. e even after – those guys like they still had good competitive teams and then it's just gone the other direction for them uh yeah. um i really like baltimore short up their bullpen as well mm -hmm. which i i am really excited for because the guy that pitched for philly last year craig kimbrell is baltimore's closer right now and while he's fine now i i just really like soto hasn't been great for philadelphia this year but like He's he's gonna be a reliable arm in the playoffs, and that's that's honestly what you need. Mm -hmm. um, and two with Baltimore, I think what's 
they called up Jackson Holiday again, who has just been mashing. Yeah. Like that dude figured maybe, it out. Maybe he just needed some time, man. Like yeah. don't forget, like these guys are kids. You know, like yeah. I wouldn't have known at thirty what I was doing in the in, in Major League Baseball. Now, granted, I didn't have that opportunity, but like these guys are what, twenty, twenty one years old and they're coming up and expecting to be like like the best. And yeah. uh it's a lot of pressure. So glad to see him having some success. Um, did we touch on Rogers yet from the Marlins? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah. yeah. yeah Cause I, they were, what I was reading about him was saying that they, they're considered the best available closer on the market, uh, at the deadline. Um, so I don't know if, uh, if you agree with that or not, but, um, it, it seems like it's going to be a good addition for the Orioles. Mm-hmm. I agree. Yeah, um, I think I really like what Baltimore did. Um, as, as a Red Sox fan, it pains me because I, Baltimore really shored themselves up well and didn't give up a ton off that loaded farm system, which mm-hmm. cool. <laughs> love get love re- to see that. Get ready for them being good uh, for cool. at least a couple years. Cool. Um, yeah. Two others that I saw that now, granted, guys, there was a lot of trades at the deadline, right? Um, but we're, we're trying to pick out the, the most meaningful ones uh, when we talk about those four there, right? That we think are going to have the biggest impact. Uh, just two others that I, I just want to mention because they're they're bigger names. Uh, a Rose Arena going to the Mariners, um, which did I, did yeah. I see him hit a home run over the Green Monster? Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, Randy, Rose Arena, Randy Rose Arena has been killing the Red Sox since 2020. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad he's out of that division. Yeah. Oh, damn it, I'm glad. Well, so so he's going to the Mariners now, or uh, going to the Mariners. He's with the Mariners now. And then Soler ends up back in Atlanta, uh, which is kind of, in, <laughs> yeah. which we had talked about this a little bit over the weekend, and you were laughing about it and stuff. But, like, he's definitely, he better get used to fielding again, uh, which could be a liability for them. But, like, they're not going to put Ozuna back in, in the outfield. That's not happening. He's their DH, so... Well, that's the thing. If you put Ozuna in the out in the field, that's even a bigger liability. Like, yeah, but in, in so far, it's been okay. But like, yeah, man, we we will have to see. But they do have three of those outfielders back on that team uh, that they used that year to replace uh, Acuna. So we'll we'll see what happens. Uh, they haven't been. Uh, I think they're on a three game losing streak, but they've narrowed the gap a tiny bit with the the Phillies as the Phillies have just been awful in their last 10 games. It's been, well, they, they've gone three and seven in their last 10. Uh, but the, yeah, the, Met, the Mets are only a game and a half back from Atlanta. And I'll tell you, like they're actually playing a lot better in the last month than they were in the previous four, um, which has allowed them to kind of narrow that gap. But um, I'm, I'm going to be real to you. I, I know like, I'm just going to tell you this now. Don't trust the Mets to do anything. <laughs> yeah. They fuck it up every time. Yeah. Like, dude, <laughs> uh, dude, I, don't. Well, one of the cool things that I, I saw in each division, and I, I feel like this, maybe I just, it hasn't been apparent or obvious to me as it is this year, but it seems like there's teams in every division where there's competition. Look, right? Like there's every... Uh, well, it doesn't matter what division it is. All of them are still up for grabs right now. Um, Before the break, the Padres were almost eight games back, and now they're only four back of the Dodgers in the NLS. Well, so I think you might have just given me the answer to the question I was going to ask, but yeah. which team do you think, out of all the six divisions that we have, uh, has the best chance of, of taking a leap, Frog, over the leader in the division? I think it's the Padres, man, just because... No offense to your Braves, like they. It, the reason I don't think the Braves are going to catch the Phillies is the same reason I think the Padres are, are going to catch the Dodgers. Both the Braves and Dodgers are just cursed. They, they're just snake bitten this year, man. Yeah. Like, uh, I, you're not. Like with, you're not bothering me by saying that. I. I'd actually, based on the way things have gone the last few years, I want the Braves not to pass the Phillies. Uh, yeah. So it's. <laughs> but like the Dodgers, like even everything down, like. I mean, uh, Freddie Freeman just came back the other night. Uh, yeah. His, his kid has a, a, a rare neurological disorder, and, like, he stepped away to deal with that. Like, it's just, like, stuff like that. Like, this team is just snake bitten this year. They really are. Like, Otani's doing what he can, but, like... 
and he's still playing Mookie pretty Betts. well, right? But like yeah, Mookie, Mookie Betts, Betts being hurt, yeah, like, like Freeman was gone. Like they just can't. And, and like the Potters are now, they've won eight of ten. Man, yeah. like they're just they're cooking, and they it have was a good bullpen now and a decent rotation. It's funny. So like I I always track last ten. Uh, when I'm me looking too. at the standings, because it, it gives me like a, a sneak peek as to like what the last week and a half has been um, for for the teams. And I noticed it looks a little different today. But yesterday when I checked in the AL West, all three teams that weren't the leader went eight and two. Or m- maybe I'm wrong about that. Uh, I think it was I think it was Houston, Texas, yeah, Houston. Yeah, no, Houston, Seattle, and Texas right now. Like Houston, Texas Seattle, and Texas. Back, yeah. But they're they're within striking distance. Like uh, I was actually wrong. It was the NL West, man. Totally wrong about that. Couldn't have messed that up worse. But it's the Padres, the Diamondbacks, and the Giants. They all went and as of yesterday, they were eight and two in their last ten. Now Giants yeah. lost one. They're at seven and three in their last ten now. But they're all uh, they're it's like they can smell the division right is is open now and they're like all right well maybe we, we're we're gonna go and snag this uh, and I don't like look man Arizona they're uh they're four and a half out they're they're right on the Padres heels they were in the World Series last year like if Corbin Carroll could just get going like mm-hmm. they're gonna be fine yeah well That's the thing like Corbin. Corbin Carroll hasn't hit all year. We talked about that last year, that he was kind of the engine, the one guy on that team uh, that yeah. really kind of made them move. But I don't know, man. I, I just, I look at some of these divisions and I, I really, I'm, I'm excited to see how it's going to pan out because 50 games to go. Don't tell me Texas can't, can't end up in the playoffs again. Like it's, there's a possibility of that, right? It just, I don't know. It's, it's about that time. Post, it is. Postseason baseball. So, uh, is there anything else you wanted to mention for baseball? No. Um, the Red Sox made a few moves. We traded for a guy that we already traded for once before as well, James Paxton. Um, we're kind of in a weird, like, little funky free fall right now. Uh, it's not great. Um, yeah. No, it's, uh, you know... Um, you know, we're on a three game winning streak, but like we just we just keep making it like I just every night they just do something really boneheaded lately and it's just that's gonna come back and haunt them. And honestly, this the month of August is they have a really tough schedule. Um it's it's just a gauntlet of who to, who they're playing. And uh I think you'll really know by the first of September if they're still kinda hanging around in this wild card race. Mm-hmm. Um I don't I know they're only five and a half back, but I don't see them catching either team. Yeah. Like, um, and they're only a half game back of the third wild card spot. So. Yeah, we'll have to see how how it works. But you're right. I I think with most most of these teams by September first, we're gonna have a very good idea of how things are gonna shake out, or at least some of those blocks are gonna fit into place a little bit better. Uh, yeah. So we can see kind of the how it's gonna be laid out for us. All you right. Know who's not gonna make the playoffs this year? The Chicago White Sox. We know they, I think they, have they already been eliminated? Um, Sadly, no. 41 games out in the division and they have not been eliminated. That's soon though. Soon. Cause, Cause they could go on a 21 game win streak. We don't know. Yeah. And they're so. 35 and a half out of the, the third wild card spot. So like, in a, I would say like in another week and a half, they could be officially eliminated, which is, which is impressive. That's insane. That's like, that's like some of those NFL teams, like the lions, uh, as of like week 10, they were out of it. <laughs> and that, that was years, yeah. a, years ago, the old lines, uh, same old line. No, not the same old lines, the old lions. Right. Um, all right. So speaking of which let's move into the NFL, right? Um, just want to mention some of the Hall of Fame inductees, right? A really great group of players that were inducted this year. Um, and it's kind of cool too. And I know this isn't the first year this has happened, but like, it's kind of cool to start seeing guys get inducted now that I grew up watching. Yeah. Um, which, yeah. which it just, I, I don't know, like some of them, Steve McMichael, Randy Gratishare, I, I didn't, I didn't see them play. Um, I may have been just too young for that, but, um, was able to see clips of them and, and what they were able to do. 
Um, but you look at some of these guys, like Andre Johnson was the alpha wide receiver when he played. Like, and we saw him twice a year, and he, that dude was a dog, man. Like he he played in Houston. He was on those. Yeah. He was on that national title team in Miami in 01 that just cooked everything. Oh, like, yeah. You go back and look at that team. That team is just an NFL team. They had, Yeah, they had Andre Johnson and Reggie Wayne. Oh, they also had Ray Lewis and Ed Reed on that team, too. And I'm I'm pretty sure it was Warren Sapp on that team, too. Not Ray, not Ray Lewis, but they did have <gasps> Ed Reed on that team. Well, Lewis must have been right yeah. before that then. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, Andre... Because Ray Lewis, remember, yeah. uh, allegedly killed two people. Allegedly. Before. Don't say that. Don't put that out there. He didn't do that. He's coming for you. And I said allegedly. He was a former wrestler. So, uh, yeah. be scared. Yeah. Uh, but the, the one thing allegedly I... Allegedly killed two people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Andre Johnson, just wanted... To, one thing I wanted to mention about him that I thought was really kind of nice was... Uh, and we had gotten into it before, talking about uh, guys and contracts and all of that stuff with, like, not wanting to play out their contracts in the NFL... Um, Andre Johnson is a guy that played for a terrible organization at the time. They were awful. Sure did. They would be lucky if they'd win four games a season. And you never heard anything from him. I'm fairly certain, too, at the end of his career, like most receivers, right? They'll move on. You get the A.J. Greens, DeAndre Hopkins. These guys move on to different teams. Uh, I'm pretty sure he played for Indy at the end of his career. So... I'm looking that up now because I call BS. I said that before, Do it, and I like I don't remember that, but it's been a minute. And, and drum roll. Yeah, no, he played one year for Indy. That's yeah, it. he did. So, wow. uh, yeah, and it was very awkward seeing him in that uniform. Uh, but uh, I know he wasn't that great for them that year. Wait, Andrew Luck had a year where he. Oh, he didn't play a lot of games that year. Nope. He got hurt. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yep. Got it. <laughs> Interesting oh, team, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, another one that got in, Patrick Willis. I know he, the th- only thing that I seem to remember much about him was that he retired very early. Uh, and people were very shocked by it because he was like an all pro. And then he all of a sudden was like, oh, yeah, I'm hanging it up. Yeah, he was the, the really kind of the heart and soul of that uh, that 49ers team that went to the Super Bowl against the Ravens, mm-hmm. the, the Harbaugh Bowl. Yep. Uh, really, what you need to know about Patrick Willis was that he uh, he wanted to kill everyone and he tackled everyone. And he, he was every single tackle. Yeah, he was very good at it. Like, very good at it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just a, a great leader. Like they talk about him and like what he does now. Uh, and what he does for children now and stuff like he's he's heavily involved. I was unsure when they were doing the voting in January. I was unsure if he was going to get in, just because really? I didn't think that he had enough. I didn't think he had played long enough. I was concerned about that, but the body of work said he he was that good. Um, yeah, but and I think the people doing the voting now are are people that are like, you know, like our age and in their like late 40s early 50s who like really got to watch these guys and, like, yeah really because i like patrick willis like 20 years ago i don't know if he gets in no like, no no, no. But, like patrick willis now yeah dude was it special he was special uh devin hester next one and uh you know i remember him all too well not only Ooh. from being a great kick returner but basically running back the opening kickoff of the super bowl um and just how surreal that was watching that game uh, with my Colts involved, right? It was just, it was wild. Uh, but he really revolutionized the game in terms of kick return. I wonder if yeah. he kind of laid the foundation for a guy like Dante Hall uh, to eventually get in. Dante Hall was first. Oh, was he first? Dante Hall was first. I thought I just read the other day that Devin Hester was the first one that got in. He is, but Dante Hall played before him. But Dante Hall was just a strict kick return. Oh, no, he was a receiver, too. He was. Yeah, Dante Hall played from 2000 to 2008. And he's in the Hall of Fame for that. No, he's not. That's no. what I meant. He was the first one in the, Hall of, in the Hall of Fame, the first kick returner for that. 
Oh, yeah, it has Grimlock. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I was like, dude, I'm pretty sure I I couldn't have messed that up, right? <laughs> no. We don't make mistakes here. No, it's okay. He was on the All-2000s team, and was Dante Hall the guy who, when he would return a kick for a touchdown, he would just do this? Was this him? I think that was him. I think it might have been. I felt I, like it was. I have trouble remembering that, but. Yeah. Oh, uh, Devin Hester on that. Uh, Devin Hester played at the U as well, man. Like, it's that's how that's how stacked those teams were. It's crazy. And, like, I, Devin Hester was always hilarious because every time he scored a return touchdown, I just kept thinking, like, why do you still kick it to him? Yeah, I, just don't kick it to him. I don't get it, man. I don't. I really don't. Man. I think it's still kick it to him. Like yeah. Dante Hall, they stopped kicking it to him after a while. Yeah, or Kevin kicked it. Hester, they were just like, nah, we're gonna keep kicking it. To him yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. But he's not gonna run it back in the Super. No way. No way. Hey, quick question: When you watched that game, that Super Bowl, and Hester returns the opening kickoff for a touchdown, what went through your brain at that moment? Where you're like, cool, Rex Grossman's gonna beat us sick um so that's what i thought for a second i was like that's hilarious so this was kind of interesting like it was um i didn't really have time to to think about that stuff because i i was watching it at my fraternity house in Mm. college and i after that happened i was the only colts fan there the there was a bunch of sourpuss patriot fans there sad because they didn't get into a super bowl the week before and uh or two weeks before and uh, they, they should have been mad uh, but they just because we gifted we gifted you uh, we blew a twenty. Don't even game. don't even say yeah. that. There's certain things that are gifted. There's certain things that are earned, and that game was earned. You... Sure, again, it, it is earned, but it, again, let the record reflect. We blew a twenty-one-three lead. Hey, put it on your boy, Golden Boy, yeah. our Lord and Savior, right? We tried. Yeah, he, had, he was throwing a Rache Caldwell. What do you want? Listen, he's he's doing his best. Did he had Wes Welker on that team too? No, that's the next year. That was the eighteen and one team the next year. Ah, that game was the reason we went out and got Randy Moss and Wes Welker. Okay, yeah, from Miami, yeah. right? You stole him from Miami. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on. But yeah, I was not. I was not in good mindset at that point. I was like, this isn't really happening right now, right? Like it's not going to go this way. And then it was a rainy game. So it wasn't really Manning threw a pick in the first half. Well, what, but... was, what was wild about that kick return was like, he just kind of ran, like nobody touched him. No. Like he just ran straight ahead and like nobody seemed to touch him. Nobody. Like he didn't juke one guy. No. He just, just kept running. Yep. Yeah. Uh, next up is uh, Julius Peppers, and uh, this oh, guy, man. I mean, talk about just a freak athlete. Like, this guy, I feel like, would have been in a Hall of Fame for whatever sport he wanted to play, um, because he was a basketball standout at UNC as well. Uh sure was. And just, I, I think that translated to the football field very well, because he had quite a few interceptions. He was able to jump up and had a lot of knockdowns, uh, pass deflections, Um but just an absolute monster when it came to getting after the quarterback. And the the one thing that I, I – this doesn't really matter when they vote for the Hall of Fame. But, like, one of the coolest things that I heard about him was he was a really well-liked guy in every locker room, locker room that he was in. They said he was always yeah. smiling, always having fun. Like, I mean, that's, that's so awesome to hear. It, it really is. Huh? I think the wildest stat about Peppers is he had 11 interceptions for a defensive end. Yeah, that's 11. That's insane. That's nuts. Yeah. He also forced 52 fumbles. Yeah. As a defensive end. Yeah. Insane. That's insane. Insane. Actually, if you look at the defensive ends that got in, and we'll mention the next one in a minute here, but like it's this class had had two of the best ever to do it. Right? Yeah. Like it, it really they unbelievable but uh yeah we'll move on uh the last one was dwight franey right and uh from my colts Ooh. and just uh very awesome yeah i got the autograph up there and uh but uh i just i don't know he was incredible to watch i remember how happy i was when i when he got his first big contract because the dude came from nothing um and just yeah it was he's always kind of been that guy really chill really relaxed but when he stepped on the football field my goodness um there was a demon inside him 
He was always the guy when we played the when the Patriots played the Colts. Uh, you always had to worry about him fucking up everything. <laughs> him and Robert yeah. Mathis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you, you had to worry about Mathis to a certain extent, but Freeney was the guy you built a whole game plan around. Yeah, because he would just wreck everything. He was so physical, and I think I told you this story before, but uh, his high school football coach. Uh, we won't throw him under the bus or anything, but he found him on the soccer field. Yeah. That tracks. Yeah. And like, he's like, there's not too many guys I know that are like six, three, six, four, two forty that play soccer. Right. So like, yeah. we're, we're going to try something different for you. And uh, it turned out it, it ended up really working. So, um, uh, but just all, all in all, a really awesome and talented group of guys I'm very confident my Colts don't have the success they do without having Freeney there. Um, and and I'm, I'm confident on all of these teams, right? Even the Texans would not have won as many games as they did, even though they won very few, without Andre Johnson being there. The 49ers with Patrick Willis, the Bears with Devin Hester, Julius Peppers and the six teams he played for, right? Like it's yeah. Carolina and Chicago, definitely, right? Like they wouldn't have won those some of those games without him. Um and uh, I don't know enough about Randy and Steve to be able to to really comment on on the impact that they had on those games. But the clips that I saw, they looked very like very very good. So. The thing that I've I've read and kind of watched about Steve McMichael is like, out of all the dudes on that '85 Bears team that were nuts, I guess the story is like he was the most nuts. Really? Which I didn't think was like. How, yeah. I like mean, he was, crazy, he was the craziest out of all of them. In what really kind of like, really like after his playing career was done, he went into pro wrestling. Yeah, that see, that's the other piece of it that's kind of crazy too, right? Like, I think uh, there's a generation of people that just know him, like from pro wrestling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that is kind of funny. And he won a ring with the Packers in 96. He went to the White House. Okay. And he takes off his like shirt. And he's wearing a bear shirt underneath. Oh, what a G. What my a G. goodness. Like, you got to have a screw loose to do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Doing what you can. Yeah. Oh, Imagine. yeah. I mean, all, all these guys, just a really awesomely talented group of guys uh, to be able to get in. So excited to see who's, you know, who's going to have an opportunity next year. Um, but uh, there's lots of news starting with uh, the start of training camp. A few dudes getting paid, a few dudes getting hurt, a few dudes getting laid. Uh, I mean, possibly traded. Um, yeah. So let's start. Guys that got paid. Tua, Tyreek, Jordan Love, right? You upset about some of those? Well, I just... Tua, like, I understand the Dolphins had to do it. I understand it. Like, I, I just, that guy was healthy for one year. I just like, but he was good for the whole year. That's the thing. Like he was, yeah. I mean, that's that's the hard part of it. Uh, the Chiefs make Harrison Butker the uh, um, top paid kicker in the league, which I know comes yeah. to the chagrin of of many people. But um, yeah. you know, their politics aside, right? And I guess they don't have to be good people; they can just be good football players, right? Um, that's, that's literally the history of the NFL. Yeah. Literally the history of the NFL. Yeah. Uh, in terms of new contracts, we're still waiting on, to hear on Dak, CD, and Jamar Chase, though it seems like they're close on CD Lamb in Dallas, but I don't know. That could just be smoke uh, coming up. But uh, you, you would think, though, like, sure, take care of the receivers, great, but like, they need a guy to throw to those receivers. And yeah. Be- they also got to lock up Micah Parsons, too. So um, yeah. I, I don't know when that's going to happen, but all of it needs to happen and and hopefully quickly so oh speaking of micah parsons real quick uh so i was reading uh that in training camp they've been playing him at linebacker off ball yeah to like to get it and i'm like cool cool what else can he do like you know what i mean i'm like and i I know they're gonna do that to like so that they can kind of keep him a little more fresh Mm -hmm. as, as the game goes along but like you just watch for that dude to pick off a couple more passes this year. I mean, he's playing off ball linebacker. Great. What's but, next? Him playing safety? Like, I mean, let him play corner. Yeah, why not? Why not? Probably do it. He'll corner blitz every play. Oh man. 
Um, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully these guys get paid. And I feel like it's going to be a series of dominoes, right? Like CD gets paid, then Jamar gets paid or Jamar gets paid and then CD gets paid. Right. I think they're both kind of holding out and seeing, but we both kind of know cause JJ has been paid, right? Tyreek's been paid now and repaid. Yeah. Right. Uh, Amon Ra slightly behind them in terms of the, the money that he's making, but he's been paid too. So they kind of know where they're going to fall in. Uh, but the agents want them to be the top paid, right? And I don't blame them. Yeah. I don't blame them at all. Um, and, and with, with Dak real quick too, like I, it, you and I talked about this I, the other weekend, like every quarterback contract that get, guy that's getting paid, like Dak has just got to be rubbing his hands together and be like, well, I'm better than this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. Yeah. Yeah. And this guy just got $212 million. So mark me down for 300 and we'll call it a day. Right. Yeah. Like it's, I, I don't know, man. Yeah. Um, there's also some news from training camps, right? Guys getting hurt. Uh, Puka Nakua, uh, they say he's likely to play week one, but doesn't look great him getting hurt in, yeah. the, in the preseason. But uh, DeAndre Hopkins, too, he's going to miss the beginning part of the season. Uh, um, but they did mention he doesn't need surgery on his knee. So that is that is definitely a good thing. Hopefully it keeps trending in the right direction. And, uh, you know, because he's an awesome player to watch on Sundays. You definitely want to see him out there. Um, but I think the biggest one that, that really hit people was Christian McCaffrey. Um, and only uh, like yeah. he's only the overall number one fantasy football player uh, on any board or should be on any board this year. Right. Um, but I, I don't know, like he's having some knee issues and stuff. I really hope they're able to get it figured out. They say he's going to be good to go for week one, but they're going to keep him out of the preseason. We'll have to kind of see where Which it goes. Which is smart anyway. Yeah. It, I, had a, I think he had like 417 carries last year. Like, yeah. Including the playoffs. Like that dude, that dude had a work. Well, so. Like. Yeah. And I just want to explain. Like a carry is not just getting handed the ball and running. It ends with usually a very violent collision. Uh, unless yeah. you get into the end zone. Right. So, or, or and you run. Then, a, that's not always a. A smooth trip. Yeah. Um, but hopefully he's going to be back soon. He's awesome. We all love him. Um, and he's amazing to watch. He just, uh, yeah. he, uh, he lives, I live vicariously through him in the NFL. Cause I know if I, he's my spirit animal. Um, but, uh, Emmanuel Mosley, uh, defensive back for Detroit. He tears his pec. Uh, Real he's quick with McCaffrey. Yeah. 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 Real quick. I... Are you nervous? It, like if you have the number one pick in, in a league that you have, like, are you ner- are, Does that make you nervous? If you asked me before last year, I'd say no. Uh, but after last year, where I drafted Cup and I drafted Kelsey, and I saw what happened with those, uh, slightly. Okay. Slightly. Uh, he's still Christian McCaffrey, but I don't know. I don't know. I'd be considering. My fear, my fear with McCaffrey. My fear with this injury is McCaffrey kind of had a hi- injury history before he came to San Francisco. He did. Yeah. And that's, and that's like, I saw that and I was like, Oh boy, here we go again. Like, I, I don't think so. I just, you know, I, I hope he does a lot to take care of his body. Um, so, he does. so I, I feel like, I feel like those injuries happen from contact. Whereas what he's going through now was like, I'm not sure exactly how it happened and all of that, but I just, I can't imagine they're going full, full speed ahead in practice right now. You know, Uh, probably taking it easy. Safeties aren't lighting him up. Linebackers aren't body slamming him as he's carrying the ball through the hole, you know, like, yeah. um, So, uh, you know, hopefully he's able to get back soon here. Um. A guy that's not going to be back soon, though, Emmanuel Mosley, right? Like, he tears his pack. He's out indefinitely. I mean, the, the he's already come back from two ACLs. Um, you know, you just wish him the best what's, going forward. What's left, but... that he hasn't, what's left that he hasn't torn? Like, good Lord. Yeah. Like, that dude That dude has the worst injury luck of anybody. Yeah, it's really tough. Um, eh, I just, you know, sad to see, right? Um, yeah. But... We also have some guys looking to get traded, right? And I know we got into kind of a heated discussion, not at each other, of course, 
Um, no, we would but... we wouldn't do that. But uh, into a, a nice discussion that got me all fired up before the show about Brandon Ayuk, and this is just the piece that's confusing to me. The day before it's announced that he's going to go out and seek trades, right? I saw a video of him dabbing up John Lynch on the field. He's in street clothes and stuff, but he's dabbing up John Lynch. He goes over, he gives a nice little hug to Kyle Shanahan. And then all of a sudden, it's like the 49ers just announced this in a weird way. Like, oh, yeah, we're going to let him seek a trade. But don't be surprised if he's also coming back. And I'm like, what kind of cryptic shit is that? Right? Like, just give him permission to seek a trade, but to throw that out there, like, we also want to mention that there's a chance we could re-sign him. Like, why even say that? Like, to me, what it says about this, it's all about the money. That's it. It is, yeah. It's all about the money. And I've seen it happen in many sports, right? Baseball, basketball, but also football. Guys chase the bag, right? They're very close on the team they're on. And guess what? They're sitting on the couch watching their previous team go to the Super Bowl the next year. And I'll tell you, like, I think the rumor is that if IU gets traded to Cleveland, it's going to be Amari Cooper coming to, to San Francisco. I think San Francisco is better with Amari Cooper there than they will be with Brandon Ayuk. And Brandon Ayuk has I, he has better stats according to PFF in terms of coverage, beating coverage, running routes, all of that stuff. But I'm telling you the way they're going to play the way teams will play them is going to be less uh, uh, people just don't um how do I say this? People do not respect how good Amari Cooper is. Because he's not a guy out there running his mouth all the time saying, like, throw me the ball, throw me the ball. He's not creating distractions, doing all of that stuff. But look at exactly how Dallas has gone, the direction they've gone in since he got traded away. I just think he would be a great addition to the 49ers. And I think Brock Purdy and him would get along seamlessly. There'd be no issues like this. But go ahead. I want to give you a chance to air your grievance on this, too. So a couple things. One and I know I've talked about this before, but the 49ers have this weird thing going on with them this year. A lot of stuff that, like, not great. Not great. And uh, between that, McCaffrey already being hurt, like, this just kind of has the, the whiff of, oh, man, is this going to be the year from hell for the 49ers? Like, because for all intents and purposes, like, it's everybody's picking them to go back to the Super Bowl. Because... Everybody, this is like their the window is quickly closing with them, mm-hmm. and they don't have many more cracks at it. And this just doesn't help. Second, I wait. Can can I ask you one thing about that? Just real quick. I don't want you to forget what you're going to say, so I'll ask quick. But do do you think there's some parallel with what's going on with the 49ers that you see in previous teams with like how the Eagles were, or similar to what you see going on in baseball, right? Like they may be snake bitten, like the Braves or the Dodgers and stuff. Do you see that happening, that same trend with this this team? It just I, – I, I'm not an aura person, or like, but like it's just a weird – there's a weird vibe going on in San Francisco right now with that team that I don't – they were a team that was really together last year, and that you could really see that team chemistry, and I – I really think that the way they lost that Super Bowl to Kansas City, I think kind of broke them a little bit. Because they, because you watch it in receiver, they talk about it all year. They're like, hey, our goal is, we have one goal. We're we just, we're winning a title this year. That's it. Mm-hmm. And I know that's the goal of every team. I get it. But San Francisco was just hell bent on it. They, they had come up so close so many other years. And they knew this was their year. They, they could just feel it. And like, yeah that and i'm just i I, i'm just it's something to watch for that i I, i'm to start the season if they start out a little slow you know they start one and three or two and two like i i think those whispers are gonna get a little louder and it could it could implode quickly if if they're not careful well well you know it doesn't take much all of a sudden it's headed in the wrong direction and it's like a freight train off the rails like how do you stop it um, yeah, I I don't think it, I want to go back to your point that you said that you think San Francisco would be better with Amari Cooper. 
I disagree. I, I disagree. Amari Cooper has like the miles, man. Like the dude's gonna be thirty. And he's been in the he's been in the league for eight, ten years now. Like mm-hmm. the dude's got some miles on him. Um, and I, I will he be a welcome addition to the 49ers? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Like Brock Purdy would love to have a guy like Amari Cooper. If I if I'm picking between the two, I think I kind of want Ayuk. I do, but without the distractions, and that's that's the thing that concerns me the most. Yeah. It's something about this position, dude. I but the thing with Ayuk is I I respect him wanting to get paid because NFL careers aren't that long, man. They're not. Like it's a violent sport mm-hmm. that has lasting long term effects. Dude, you gotta get that bag where you can. I I don't love the way he's going about it, but I respect him I respect him wanting to get paid. I think I need to I have trouble differentiating between the two, how he's going about it and the yeah. actual you know wanting that to get done. So, yeah, I could I could probably take a step back, but um yeah. if he wants to talk about it in person, hey, I'm I'm here, you know, only about what what would it be like 8,000 miles away from where he is? 9,000? I think so. Yeah, 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 yeah. so I think LA's about 9,000 away. So, uh, well, he's in San Francisco, but about the same over there. So, yeah. anyhow. But, uh, yeah, hopefully it, they end up getting it figured out. And um, for the love of God, please give us some finalization on this Rasheed Rice thing. Like, some of us are trying to draft fantasy teams this year, man. Like, yeah. uh, I'm just, I'm tired of it. We know J- Jordan Addison, he's he's got a suspension coming. We know that, right? Rasheed Rice, sure get, it, get it figured out, Roger. Come on. Yeah. You know, I, I just, uh So, yeah. um, last thing I wanted to mention, uh, Seattle ended up signing Connor Williams, which I, I typically wouldn't really make the news. But the reason it's important is he's going to slot in as their starting center. And I think... We understand how important the the center position is on the offensive line. I think he's going to provide them experience and depth at that position, and be able to lead that line um, in a in a much better way. I just they're going to need him to live up to those standards if they're going to be you know if they're going to fulfill the shoes of or fill the shoes of you know being your favorite coaching hire in the off season, right? Um, yeah. because Mike McDonald's going to need production on that offense, and if they don't get it, it could be it could be rough. So, um, yeah, he was a big part of those Dallas teams for the last few years, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, that's that's a huge pickup for Seattle that like really flew under the radar. Yeah, uh, I'm actually a little more excited for Seattle now than I was. That's I think I worded it probably wrong there. Not that it's not newsworthy, but it's like ESPN purposely tucked it down a ways. And I'm like, why? Yeah. Why? This is a big signing for Seattle. This is a big deal for Geno Smith. Geno Smith is probably doing back handsprings at his apartment right now. Well, or his like, home, right? <laughs> I I don't think they like purposely buried it, but like to to guys to people like you and I. Like, that's a big signing because we're like, oh, Connor Williams, he played, like... Yeah. But, like, I think to the casual fan, they're just like, cool? Offensive yeah. lineman. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. They they play. <laughs> yeah. They play. I only notice the guys on the outside and the, the guy that gets the ball and throws it and the guy yeah. that runs the ball, right? Um, yeah, no, I, I'm... Now that knowing that, like, after seeing that, that signing, like, I... I know we're in a soon we're gonna figure out like hey who's gonna win the division who's gonna like make the playoffs like that that actually kind of swayed things more than I thought that was going to for me. I can't wait to talk yeah. about those like that's yeah. gonna be so much yeah. fun going through and yeah talking through the divisions. Uh, it's it's not gonna picking be... the Jets. I'm not doing it. Wow, not doing it. Okay, well, um, not doing it. Yeah. Because they made me look bad last year. They made uh, me look bad. Hey, that's okay. No. That's okay. Um, all right. So uh, before we close up here, we got a new trivia question. You want to go ahead and ask it, Al? Yeah. So I uh, this morning I watched the first episode of Hard Knocks with the Bears. Um, for some pretty good stuff. But uh, the, the focus is really Caleb Williams. Uh, so the question is, who holds the single season record for passing yards uh, for the Chicago Bears. Okay. In a season, uh, right? Yeah, in season. And I will tell you this. This sh- kind of shocked me. 
The Bears have never had a 4,000-yard passer. This team has played for 105 years, and they have never had a 4,000-yard passer. Let that sink in for a minute. But they have had quarterbacks refuse to go back in in playoff games. Uh, (laughs) They've had everything, but they've never had a 4,000-yard passer. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Um, and it should, shouldn't be the Chicago bears anymore. It should be like a, an old school Motown band, right? Right. For real. Williams and the bears, right? Caleb Williams and the bears, right? It's, oh man. All right, man. Well, that, that's about it. Uh, we can wrap up and stuff and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll obviously be bringing you guys some content next week and stuff, but was there anything you wanted to mention before we close up Al? Uh, no, I think we're good. You know, uh, it's a great episode again. Uh, yeah. And I'll, uh, that's yeah. Stay safe. And I love you. Love you too, bro. Peace. Peace.